It is a beautiful, stunning, sunny day here in Australia. And I figured I would just post a very quick update to our last week's video about the top 10 performance cruising catamarans. A uh, couple things I wanna say. First of all, your comments were amazing. I love the conversation we had in the last video. Lots of questions about boats that were not talked about. People are dying to know about the new Ultramare 55 and the new Garcia Explore Cat, or Explore Cat, however they pronounce that one. Um, you know, those are great boats. Um, the 55 is a little bit too big to be in this uh, size comparison with the Ultramare 51. That's kind of what we were doing was comparing our current boat to other boats within its class. Uh, although there were a couple boats that were left out. The Explo Cat, I've, I've kind of determined, I looked into it, it's not really a performance cat. It kind of has performance cat shape to it, but it's it's got really thick aluminum, especially up on the front and under the water lines for those exploration days. And it weighs a lot more than this class. It's not really a performance cruising cat. It's more of an exploration cat. So that's why that one was left out. There were some boats though that probably should have been included. Uh, boats like the Daz Cat, or the slider those two for sure should be included in fact i've even updated the, the graph it's now the top 12 just because it's super curious to look at those boats especially the daz cat that thing is a screamer it's going to give orca a run for its money so i've included those now in the graph and i'll do maybe a, a quick highlight of what those boats are at the end of this video with elizabeth but um, just in terms of the top 12 now, we've also left out boats like Chris White and Shonings. Those are boats you buy a, a design from and you commission a yard to build, go build your boat. I really want to try and focus this on yards that are building branded boats and they're all kind of basically the same and you can compare apples to apples. Even apples to pears is maybe a better metaphor, but uh, at least those boats are similar enough that you can say this is what that boat is like. Whereas some of these Chris White boats, they're phenomenal and we have friends that cruise on them, but you can build them kind of how you want and, and using the materials you want. So they do vary a little bit in terms of construction. So that said, uh, maybe another day we'll do a video on kit boats and uh, go go out and buy design. Um, it's kind of another video concept. So those are separate, separate concepts. All right, so let's get down to brass tacks. What are the three boats that we would pick and why? What are the top three? I don't want to give a number one boat. I don't want to uh, rate one as the best or better than the others. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, I think it wouldn't be genuine. I, um, you know, I have aspirations to kind of work in this industry, I think. And I've worked with Utremer and I've worked with HH and I've, I've done kind of brand consulting for some of these companies. I uh, haven't really been paid a lot, but, uh, or anything, uh, but um, I'm working on that. And, you know, I don't want to come down. I, don't, I want this to remain my personal opinion. It, it isn't a paid opinion. No one has told us to do this video. No one has told us what to say. All the research has been our own. A lot of this is subjective. A lot of it's our own opinion on how we look at the industry and what we would consider if we were buying a new boat. And that I think is valuable, valuable to everybody. It's not valuable if it's a paid for thing. So for that reason, I don't want to list a top one. What I would say though, is that the Balance 526, the Utremer 51 and the OC50 are kind of our top three. If you probably got that in the last video, now you're, you're splitting hairs. It's almost now a subjective decision of what's the boat, best boat for you and what you're gonna be doing on that boat. You know, some of those boats have more protected helms, uh, some have less protected helms. And if you're more of a coastal cruiser or a weekend warrior, then a less protected helm and, and more exposed out in the open is fine. Uh, or maybe you just like sailing that way. For us, we love to be protected. So there's a lot of things to start to get subjective. Looks, the most subjective of all. You know, which boat is the best looking is completely up to you in terms of what you think is the best boat. So I, I don't want to get down to comparing those boats. I think that um, if you are going to buy a new performance cruising cat though, do kind of go down that decision tree process of probably price is the most important thing. Value, resale is important construction durability what are these boats made out of what are the materials inside how long are these boats going to last how are they going to hold up in terms of their uh, resale value those are incredibly important financial decisions uh, then you know uh, the layout you know is a really wide opening door uh, like the hh more important or for you than the balance where it's kind of a smaller door but then you, you get the versa helm you know those are subjective trade-offs that i think a buyer needs to make for themselves so that's kind of how we look at the category. Um, if we were buying a boat with a family in mind, going cruising around the world like we have been, you know, that's based, this is kind of our experience and based on what's important for us. So that's kind of it. I think that's, that's a wrap on the top 12 cruising boats now. Um, hopefully the data has been helpful. I've, uh, I'll share the new updated charts and sheets 
I forgot, I also need to make two corrections. Um, the Wendello, I made a mis huge mistake on the price on the last one. I've now fixed that in the graph. The price is not 1.6, it's 1.1. Huge apologies to the folks at Wendello. And thank you to the owners that, that commented down below in our last video and helped correct me. And then I also need to correct the Sea Wind 1600. They've made the boat heavier. Apparently owners were buying it and it was, it was performing well, but when you loaded it up, it couldn't hold the weight. And so they've widened the hull and added some weight. And so I've corrected the weight graph uh, on that one as well. So those are two corrections from last week. But please, more comments. If you like this type of information, hit that subscribe button. Hopefully you also like our normal travel videos. We've got another one of those coming out on Tuesday. And, um, and we'll, I love doing this. I love talking boats. I love the industry. I, I want to talk more about construction, what's more environmentally friendly, what's stronger, what's going to last longer. That's a rabbit hole that I've started to go down, so that's probably a future video. Kit boats versus branded boats, is that maybe a better value? Building your own boat, there's a lot of YouTubers out there doing that right now. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff to talk about in the, in the boating industry, and it's a passion and hobby of mine, as you can tell. So. Thanks for watching, I hope that's fair. Um, if you guys have more questions or feedback or thoughts, please leave a comment down below and take our survey. We have added a survey to the description down below. Maybe I'll put it up above here and uh, you can pick which boat you would choose out of those top 10. Uh, this is a survey from the last video and uh, let us know your thoughts. All right guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. We're on our way to the reef, the Great Barrier Reef. Talk to you soon.